We are in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, and our first couple of days here have been deeply disappointing, to say the least. It all started when we, the morning we were leaving Zanzibar, because we had made our Airbnb reservations for what, like a month ahead of time? Yeah. And, you know, because we don't want to wait until the last minute, especially since we're in places for a long period of time. We want to make sure the bed is comfortable. We want to make sure we have internet, um, you know, some way to do our laundry, all these kind of things. So we went ahead and, and booked the place uh, for Dar es Salaam. And the morning that we're leaving Zanzibar to come back across the ferry, which is only like an hour and a half away, we get a message from the host saying that the Airbnb that we originally reserved is no longer available. And he wanted to replace that with one that was, let's say, not so best, and for like $200 more for the trip. Um, so we didn't want to do that, and that wasn't even the beginning of our problems with that Airbnb host. When we first messaged him, um, you know, as soon as we messaged him, we had a, a couple of conversations back and forth um, to, to make sure we had everything we wanted, and then we get an automated message saying, you know, you can only have, use so much power at the unit before you have to pay additional money for that power. So basically he was telling us if you use like the hot water heater all day long and the air conditioning all day long, we have to pay additional money in addition to the rent just to have enough power. <laughs> now that's not listed anywhere. He didn't bring that up while we're having a conversation. The key is how does someone treat you once they have your money? And we did not have a good uh, feeling about this, but he also had a really bad cancellation policy. Um, <laughs> now when we booked it, we booked it at about $17 a night, but he had two options through Airbnb. There was a $17 a night where it's non-refundable, and then there was a $19 a night where you could actually get a refund. But and only he, within 24 hours of booking. But only within 24 hours of booking. So it, it, it made no sense to book the $19 a night when we could get the $17 a night. Once the deal uh, went through through Airbnb, he messaged us originally like a month ago asking for more money and it's like no dude this is what you have it listed at so i guess he was changing some of the things in the listing one of them being you know i, I guess he said it was originally listed at like 22 dollars a night or something in the low 20s and originally he said that he would pick people up from the airport we came in through the ferry but like hey can you pick us up he's like no i can't do that um he said that they provide like a light breakfast he's like oh well that was when it was at 22 dollars a night it's like okay <laughs> so there was no reason not to pay the $17 a night. So we did that and everything was fine. And then he, but then he messaged us and this is our last word before the day of, he said, well, I guess, what'd he say? Uh, Airbnb screwed me over. Yeah, yeah I, I guess I fell into a trap or something oh, yeah, like that. that was, yeah. I was like, well, we didn't trap you, dude. You're like, you have a terrible cancellation policy. You know, you're in the middle of taking bookings while you're still updating your listing and you're taking away all of these amenities that we wanted in the first place. So but it's like, all right, well, we're locked in because we don't want to pay the cancellation fee. If you cancel through Airbnb, you have to pay, whether you're the host or uh, the guest. And we only had 24 hours, so we already passed that window. Okay, so that was all the drama originally. And then the day of, yes, he messaged us saying, basically your unit's not available, but for $200 more, I can switch you to this other one. And he was making excuses like, oh, the, the power wasn't working and some other nonsense. So we went through Airbnb and we said we told them everything that we ha that happened to us and airbnb is really good with their customer service because they were able to look through all the previous messages and see that we're not lying and this guy was trying to scam us and give us the running around i mean oh very frustrating but the good news is the night before we went to zanzibar we got into dar es salaam at 2 a.m which we made a whole video about this nightmare uh, trip from mombasa kenya to dar es salaam Tanzania. We got there at 2 a.m. and we were, what was it, like a 10 minute walk, five minute walk to the apartment. And through that walk, uh, we got there at 2 a.m. and like no one bothered us. We had all of our bags with us. Like it felt very safe in the area that our hotel was in. So we decided to get a night at the one hotel where we stayed before Zanzibar and um, to then buy we, us some time. To buy us some time. We went through some other places and I think we got some good deals, but like the one that we're in right now is $15 a night. Um, and with that, you get good internet. Like each floor of this hotel has like its own internet. Uh, you get a light breakfast, which 
you know, it's better than no breakfast. It's just like basically bread and jam and butter. But you also get coffee and tea. Uh, bed is soft and comfortable. Um, so yeah, we really do enjoy it. So we definitely started off disappointing with that. And we decided to just do a long-term stay at this hotel that we're at. Um, save us a bit of money and uh, not have to worry about everything. And the Airbnb has already refunded us our money uh, from the first one in Dar es Salaam. So we're good to go. Now it hasn't been all bad because we really are enjoying our time once we got settled into uh, our lodging area. The people here have been really, really nice. Um, the food has been really good and especially the street fruit. For the first time ever, we tried jackfruit, which I've heard of uh, before, but I've, we've never seen it and we've never just had it like cut up uh, for us and handed to us on the street. So we're able to try that here in Dar es Salaam. This is something awesome that we see when we're walking around Dar es Salaam. This is a jackfruit uh, stand. I've seen this at like Trader Joe's where people uh, use it as like, um, kind of like a, a meat substitute or like, uh, like a crab meat substitute. So we're really excited to actually try this here in Africa. Uh, yeah. They get pretty big. I don't think yeah, he has like a full he's one here. He's cutting one right here. You're cutting right here? Oh, there's oh, some right over there. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Let me just show it. Stay right there. Alright. So this is what they look like right here. These huge jackfruits. And we're gonna try some that's already cut up here. Um, of course we're on a busy road here, as you do. And hopefully it is not rain or anything like that. Yeah. My friend, what's your name? What's, how do you say what's your name? Uh, uh, Jacko Lago? Gina Lagu? Gina Lagu? Gina Lagu? Gina Lagu. Gina Lagu. Huh? Uh, my name is Musta Musta Nesto. Musta Nesto. Okay. Nina Furahi Gukutana na Wewe. My name is Kati. And this is Will. Hi. This is our Rafiki. You're my Rafiki. Ah, okay. So you said 1,000 shillings for a cup? Okay. Asante sana. <laughs> Alright, All right, we're gonna try it. Okay. Give you a little toothpick? Perfect. Yeah. This guy's carrying a lot of jackfruits. Yeah, that's good. Mizuri. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it tastes like a fruit. Does it taste like a pineapple or like passion fruit or anything? Like it has a like a, a fruity flavor to it, but it doesn't have like a. I don't feel like it resembles another fruit. It's a, a very unique taste. Is it like sweet or sour? Or? It's sweet. Um, but not as sweet as like a pineapple or anything. No, like that. not as sweet, and it's not juicy either. Here, you try it. Right. The texture is already a little bit weird. Just bite it. <laughs> Yeah, it's almost like a jelly. Like it's not like not like pudding or anything like that, but it's almost like the consistency of a jelly. Yeah, it's more like gelatinous. It's pretty good. Yeah, it is sweet, but not sweet like a pineapple. It's very good. I'm glad we finally tried this. Yeah. Another thing is just how good the food is. We went to this one restaurant and it was a fam like a mom and pop restaurant and they were super nice. Uh, they had really funny signs like all of our waiters are married. They're really good at taking orders. And they, and they had another sign that said, um, you know, we don't have Wi-Fi. Uh, talk to the people at your table. Pretend it's 1995. So that was really funny. 1995? 1995. 65? No, I think it said 1995. Oh. Yeah. Did yeah. we have? We didn't have Wi-Fi. Oh, I yeah. don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> She's too young to remember these things. But anyways, it was a great restaurant. Uh -huh. The great thing is if we're going to eat with our hands, we need to make sure we wash our hands properly. And all these restaurants will have amazing hand washing stations. So you can wash up. Which is good because then your meal doesn't taste like hand sanitizer, but your hands are still clean. Alright, 
we are at, I think it's called Kalamiz here in Dar es Salaam, uh, Tanzania, and we are trying rice with a bongo uh, vegetable special. Uh, we said, what does bongo mean? He said it means brain. So I guess only smart people eat this. And if you've seen our Kenya video, we ate ugali like a bunch of crazy foreigners. So we're trying to learn the error of our ways. But everyone's like super nice and friendly. So they'll tell you like, oh, you can eat it whatever way you want to. But uh, we don't want to disappoint you guys. So they said mix, uh, put on the plate the vegetables and the rice and then eat it with your hands. And we're all washed up. Um, so we're gonna try to see how this tastes. Okay, it looks like what there's cucum um, yeah, cucumbers, carrots, green peppers, Ooh, little trees. Zucchini, yeah. Zucchini, zucchini, zucchini no cucumber. Yeah, no cucumber. Oh, okay, zucchini. Yeah. Zucchini. I don't eat a lot of vegetables. I don't know. <laughs> we got green beans. Yeah. Okay. Green beans, corn, broccoli, cabbage, carrots, peas. Yeah. All right. Corn, corn, sweet corn. So what's the right way to do this? Do I take some rice and then scoop it up? How would you eat so this? I will, I will eat a uh, little bit of rice, a little bit of... Uh, so a little bit of rice and a little bit of this. All right, let's try it. <laughs> Last time people got mad at us for eating ugali the wrong way. What? People got mad at us for eating ugali the wrong way. What? So we're trying to eat food the right way. <laughs> rice is really good, I like it. It's easy to eat with your hands. This one's gonna be a little bit harder. Real good flavor on this. Now, now take a little bit of rice, a little bit of that in one scoop. In one All right. Scoop. I had to build up to this moment. <laughs> I wasn't ready at first. No, no. That you just tested the rice first. How how it was, right? And the yeah. Uh, and the stew, how it how it looks like, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now mix both of them. Okay. Then, now yes. now mix it with this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, in just one scoop. Or in yeah, one scoop. I don't know. What... The, yeah, you were doing it right. Oh, okay. You were good. Let's you try it again. Okay, we got this. <laughs> Got this. Yeah. Hmm? Together with that. Alright. Okay. Yeah. That's nice. Now, yeah. I'll try with our chili. Oh, the chili sauce. Now we're going to try some chili sauce. It's quite hot. It's quite hot, he said. Yeah. What spices do you taste? Do you know? No idea. I do idea. not know. So, maybe put this on this? Yeah. I don't know if that's too much. It's a special spicy sauce. Let's get some rice. And then onto the vegetables with the spicy sauce. It really just tastes like tomato sauce, really. It's not like super spicy, but this spicy sauce is gonna probably be intense. Let's go. This is where all the peppers are. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> all right, cool it down with some pina colada. <laughs> uh, oh. oh, there's a hiccup. <laughs> and we got a pina colada juice. <laughs> Uh, which hopefully <laughs> solves your hiccups. It's got, um, I don't know what's the name? Pineapple. Pineapple juice. And it's got coconut milk. And hopefully it deals with spices. I think it's coconut water and pineapples. I think no, it, it's fine. I think it's, it's coconut like milk that. and pineapple. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you don't want to just eat, uh, or you don't want to just drink random ice from a random uh, restaurant. So, kind of how they make it. So it's not like super thick because it doesn't have ice in it, but it's still very tasty. Yeah, it's like a, a room temperature pina colada. All right, we're gonna eat the the rest of this and uh, enjoy it, and hopefully these hiccups go away. I think they're starting to go away, so that's a good thing. And now we're basically just walking around, uh, walking around one of the main streets here in Dar es Salaam. And we're gonna be here for a little while. We've already been to Zanzibar, so if you haven't seen those videos, check those out. And we're going to spend some time. I think we have 90 days total that we could be here on our visa. And you know, the holidays are coming up and we're gonna just see how much we can find here in Dar es Salaam from more street food uh, to more markets and whatever else we can find. So thank you guys so much for watching this and stay tuned for what's to come. This is Witty Travels. What, what could possibly, possibly be next? next?